56% from three over the last three games. They're going to need that kind of effort from that young man. He can get to the rock as well. Minnesota 6-2 and two on the young season. They've got a three-game winning streak. This is how they're going to start tonight. There is DeAndre Matthew who runs the point with Hollins also in the backcourt. Carlos Morris, Joey King, and Mo Walker. And then Quinton Hooker, Terrell DeRuin, Eston Tyler, Jerron Nash, and Chad Calcaterra for North Dakota. 3-4 and four on the season. This Minnesota in home white and North Dakota in road black here tonight. When you're on the road, there's two things that you can't do. You cannot turn the basketball over, and they cannot afford North Dakota to allow Minnesota to dominate them on the offensive glass. These longtime college hockey rivals meeting here on the hardwood for the first time since 1983. We're underway, and North Dakota controls the opening tip. It's Quinton Hooker running the point here for North Dakota. A lot of drive and kick opportunities for North Dakota. And Ashton Tyler buries the first three of the night. Well, you have to be disciplined when you're playing against this North Dakota team defensively and not come help unnecessarily. Minnesota did that, made him pay with a three ball. Tyler, the transfer from UMKC, and that's one thing about this North Dakota bunch. They've got a lot of transfers, seven Division I transfers on the roster. Minnesota on that three-game winning streak that includes wins over Georgia and Wake Forest as they work it inside to Walker and the little hook got it to go and won. Well, I was going to say earlier, I'd like to see this Minnesota team really establish Walker down in the low post. There's no one on that front line of North Dakota that can stop him from scoring once he catches it in the box. There's Brian Jones. Four straight winning seasons after leading the program from Division II to full Division I status. He's done a nice job with the group out of Grand Forks as the three-point play for Walker. Ties this one up. North Dakota really worked hard today in shoot-around of handling the basketball against that pressure. They want to keep guys spread so that the double team doesn't come quickly. There's a... Unforced error for North Dakota. They turn it back over to Minnesota as Richard Patino gets ready for his second Big Ten campaign. Led this team to an NIT title last year in year number one. Well, he's excited. I talked to him. I asked him why did he take this Minnesota job. He said because of the way they come and support their guys. He feels that a, that's a home court advantage that he can take advantage of. Off the steal, DeRuin lays it in. Transfer from New Mexico State gives North Dakota the lead back. It's a big concern I have for Minnesota. They've been turning that rock over the last four games at 17 turnovers a clip. Can't do that if you want to be an elite team in the Big Ten. Yeah, they turn teams over, but they're also giving it up quite a bit. Boy, nice effort there by Walker on the stick back attempt. Doesn't get it to go. Now, breaking back here is North Dakota. Nice little finger roll by Quinton Hooker on the off balance shot. North Dakota has really come out aggressively attacking in the open floor, which is their game. Hooker at Twin Cities native, Minnesota's Mr. Basketball a couple of years ago out of Park Center High School. He's fired up to play here tonight as they keep working that low post in Mo Walker. And that's something that they can take advantage of all night. You want to force North Dakota to have to double team your big down low. Now that'll open up your perimeter game because Walker's a really good passer. Calcaterra, the skip pass. To ruin for three and it rattles down. North Dakota has really confident wing players. Their backcourt, they are very confident. North Dakota has made its first four field goal attempts. Go right back inside to Walker. And they do. Battling there with Calcaterra. And Walker physically is probably going to win that battle all night. Well, Calcaterra did a really nice job of pushing him off the block, but that's the evolution of Walker's game. He can score it off the block as well. North Dakota is terrific when they can get out in transition. They have four guards who can really get to the rack. Terrell DeRuin, Terrell DeRuin is really good. But this is what I'd like to continue to see from this Minnesota team. When Walker catches the rock on the interior, he'll force them as he continues to score in the low block to have to double team, and that'll open up the perimeter game for Minnesota. He's got the first seven points of the night for the Gophers. 
Deron penetrates, and there's Walker slapping it out of bounds. Mo Walker has lost 70 pounds since Richard Patino got the job here. He has whipped him into physical shape. Well, he looks terrific. His stamina is up, and he's very, he's more active than I've ever seen him, both on the defensive and offensive ends of the floor. He has always had great potential here at Minnesota. This year, they are hoping he starts to live up to it. Shot clock at five here, penetrating Tyler. Throws it up, goes off the top of the backboard, tipped up. And the shot clock expires. Yeah, Minnesota went to that little 2-3 zone that they play very unconventional, much like the Louisville Cardinals. Mm -hmm. And so North Dakota is going to have to do a better job of kick, driving, kicking it, and redriving it is how you break it down and get some opportunities in the half court. It really is essentially the Louisville defense. And that three ball goes down for Carlos Morris, the junior college transfer. He's been really scoring it over the last two games, averaging about 12 points on the year, 16 points per game over the last two. It's beautiful dribble, drive, and kick game, and that's exactly what DeAndre Matthew does. He loves to put that basketball on the floor, and if you step up and take him, he's a really good passer. Beautiful execution in the half court for Minnesota. Hollins penetrates, nice. gives it off to Mo Walker again, and emphatically slams it down. The dribble penetration, the last two possession, has really hurt North Dakota. Nice. Matthew for Morris, and he's fouled. And that brings us to our first media timeout. Mo Walker averages 10 points per game. He has already got nine for the Maroon and Gold. His size and strength to his advantage on the interior. And as I said before, when he's going good on the interior, it opens up that perimeter game. Now DeAndre Matthew can beat you off the bounce and look for kicks to the three-point shooters. Minnesota got some bad news today. True freshman forward Josh Martin announced he was going to transfer. And they were already without sophomore guard Daquan McNeil suspended indefinitely after four games. So now depth an issue for Minnesota, meaning everybody has to step up. Well, they've had guys playing out of position as well. But again, over the last three games, I think they've really gotten that under wraps. And they're playing with a lot more fluidity than they did before. Jerron Nash, the best player for North Dakota, scoreless so far, misses from three. And here comes Minnesota with the two-point lead. King dumping it down to Walker again. Kept it alive. He's so much more athletic than he's been in years past for Minnesota. Great backdoor pass and the foul on Morris. DeAndre Matthew has great vision for the Gophers at the point. Uh, uh, un unbelievable. And the key to this game for North Dakota is how can they contain his dribble penetration. They've not been able to do it successfully. He's been able to get in the gaps and kick it out for three. And that was a beautiful backdoor read there. Carlos Moores made the perfect read. When you see your defender up the line, it opens up that baseline for you to be able to attack. That was a terrific, terrific read by Carlos Moores. Matthew, in his second season at the point for Minnesota, he really makes the Minnesota offense go, averaging almost nine points per game and six assists per game. Yeah, and I talked to Coach Richard Pertino today about him and asked, was he surprised by how well DeAndre Matthew has played? And he said he's been very surprised. Usually, JUCO transfers usually have highs and lows, no consistency. It has not been the case ever since DeAndre Matthew walked on campus. Minnesota now in the 9-0 run as they pressure North Dakota full court. They're doing a nice job, North Dakota, of handling the full court pressure. They are not handling this zone very well. They've no. got to screen that thing, get it to the weak side, let it flip the floor once or twice, and it'll open up dribble lanes to attack the gap. DeRuin misses from three as they're starting to launch from outside. They hit a few early. Beautiful. And now King is bumped. And it's a foul on Dustin Hobart. I think more shooters, especially in transition on ball or on ball reversals, need to use that shot fake because they're at such a great... The defense who's closing out is at such a great disadvantage. I'd like to see more players use it. You get yourself, get that team in foul trouble and put yourself on the line early. 
Walker. Another hook shot over Calcaterra. I tell you, he is feeling it tonight. We're talking a little trash to Calcaterra coming up the floor as well. Maybe feeling it too much. <laughs> yeah, he's so patient when he's catching it down there. Kudos to this Minnesota team looking for it. When you can make a move one way, go the opposite. Because you can't bar arm, you can't straight arm, you can't bent arm like you can in the NBA. It is nearly impossible to guard a low post player. Mo Walker doing a phenomenal job here in the first half. North Dakota hasn't scored since the 17-41 mark. There you go. Calcaterra, jump shot. Got it to go over the outstretched arm of Hollins. Notice the ball change sides of the floor. And when you do that, you can get dribble penetration and it'll open up some clear looks. The rebound by Walker. New shot clock for Minnesota. Muscles right back in there and scores again. North Dakota's going to have to dig that out. If they don't double team him, you got to get a guard sitting in his lap. It is too easy right now for Mo Walker to score in the box. 6'10 senior, 6 of 7 from the field. North Dakota has no answer for him right now. The corner is open. They got to look back, North Dakota, to the corner guy on the strong side. To it ruin. is wide open. Missed another three. Minnesota is going to get it back. Says the ball reverses the floor. Now you get that two guards actually trying to help up top, and it creates some passing lanes. But this has been the story for Minnesota. Mo Walker has been a beast in the low post, dominating the offensive glass. And his ability to use the offhand is such a weapon when you're playing against someone your size or taller because it's difficult to block because you have to go through the shoulder that's in your chest to be able to block that shot. Remember what Richard Patino was telling you and I during shoot around today. He's sometimes too laid back. I don't think we're seeing that being a problem tonight. Well, Coach Patino said that he needs to think that he's the best big in the Big Ten. He's done that tonight. Joey King missed from three. Holland's got the ball on the back side and then's fouled. Clay, I think for North Dakota. When they've gotten Minnesota to miss, I think they're taking too much time to get the basketball up the floor. Misses and makes, they've got to push that basketball and look for some easy opportunities because they've not been successful at all against the 2 3 zone. Walker comes out, gets a nice hand from the crowd here at Williams Arena as nice. Eliasson checks in. There's a rejection by Jerron Nash. Nash, the leader in points and rebounds for North Dakota. Nothing on the board so far, and he's stripped by Hollins. Hollins for three, and it goes off the window and down. <laughs> Talk about home court advantage. <laughs> so far, it's been uh, that kind of half for the Gophers. Yeah. Everything going their way. Mm -hmm. Hollins hit seven threes against Wake last week in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. He was really feeling it that day. Yeah, seven of ten from the three-point line. Phenomenal. Nice. Nash. First points for Jerron Nash, who averages 14 per game. Tough contested shot, but there's again that baseline is wide open. That's something that North Dakota can take advantage of because the low forwards are coming so high to play the wing guys. It's open. Nate Mason kicks it into the corner for Matthew. He'll bring it back out. They really like the true freshman, Nate Mason. And that's why. He is mature beyond his years. He's so patient coming off the ball screen. Saw the gap and attacked it immediately. Nice body control as well. See those good looks right there. I don't know if you can pass up against this 2-3 zone. Usually when you don't take the first shot, it usually leads to a bad shot <laughs> or a tough shot. And it uh, looks like the bank is open tonight. Quentin Hooker got that one to go. <laughs> he had the game winner to beat Drake on Saturday. For North Dakota. King leaning in. And but he's going to be called for too many steps. But Minnesota leads it here by six. 11 one to go here in the first half. Close connections with that man. Yeah, you talk about the Rick Patino coaching tree that's been right. created. And boy, he seems to have everyone in various places. And they're successful everywhere there are. So what a compliment to Coach Rick Patino.
the Hall of Famer. We used to say about Billy Donovan, a young up and coming coach, but for a long time now it seems uh, he's been the elder state, <laughs> statesman of the SEC. He's still a young man, but Richard Patino, 32 years old, the fourth yeah. youngest Division I head coach, led Minnesota to that school record 25 wins and an NIT title last year. That NIT, something they can certainly build on, but they are hungry for more. Well, without a doubt, he said that, and that's exactly what why these games are so important to really establish themselves early. But in order to get there, Mo Walker's going to have to be terrific, and he's been that tonight. Timeout called here by Minnesota as Eliason. Not the call as... Chris Jones and Terry Rozier of Louisville and how intensely and fiercely they played defensively It was really good for Andre Hollins and DeAndre Matthew to witness that and what I'm seeing in, with my own eyes right now Is a greater level of intensity on the defensive end from that combo The losses to Louisville and St. John's for Minnesota this is the second game of a six-game December homestand before they open Big Ten play at Purdue on New Year's Eve day. I think with this lineup in right now for Minnesota, even with Eliason on the inside, he has number 22, Craig Shields, who's a freshman at 6'8", only 200 pounds. So I think Minnesota can go back to him. Beautiful executor. Bugs on the receiving end of the alley-oop. First points for Charles Bugs as Minnesota is continuing to dominate. That's rejected. And now North Dakota comes back. Nash around Elias and got it to go. Notice the push and the opportunities that are created off the push for North Dakota. They need more of it if they hope to climb back in this game. North Dakota in its third year as a member of the Big Sky Conference. They were the tournament runner-up last year. Pick ninth this year. Brian Jones, with all those Division I transfers, feels that his team can be competitive this year. The notable alum is Phil Jackson, of course. Boy, every time I see his name, I think of the red and black during the Michael oh, Jordan yeah. years in the NBA. Great years with the Lakers, too, as head coach. Yes. That fails to click between Morris and Eliasson. I, I like the fact that they're looking for Eliason though with this lineup again for North Dakota Eliason can give them some buckets down there uh, He's a better rebounder better defender than Walker But he can get some buckets inside against this North Dakota team. They are thin across their front line He and Mo Walker having a beard growing contest and uh, Eliason <laughs> says he gave Walker about a week's head start <laughs> Because he knew he was gonna be able to grow that thing. He's got on his face right now. It's That's pretty true. good it Looks like Paul Bunyan. There's that corner we spoke of and Tyler misses from there. He hit there earlier here comes Morris in transition for Minnesota. Dumps it off at the last moment to the shortest guy on the floor. DeAndre Matthew had no problem in there amongst the trees. He just has terrific awareness of where he is on the floor. Wow, look at the pressure creating. the. That's why it's so important to get ball pressure. But this is why this young man is so special. He's 5'9", folks. I really think he's about 5'7". And the ability to hang and find an angle around the trees, amazing for number four in white. He was voted the team MVP last year. After transferring from junior college that's hard to wow. do to hit the ground running like he did and here he is again and he scored the last four points for minnesota you told me today that he reminds you of tyus edmund oh his ability to change ends of the floor he's a blur really good on the defensive end and he's really the key to a lot of their offense because his ability to attack the gaps and find people in free flight matthew again and Brian Jones has seen enough. He calls a timeout for North Dakota. Tyler just couldn't handle the one-on-one -on -one pressure and bangs it off of his foot. So that's why I like to always put pressure on the basketball because all of a sudden you're not thinking, not focused, and create a turnover. We've seen several of those here in the first half. Mo Walker back into the game for Minnesota. He's leading all scores with 13. Ah! 
Knifing in is Josiah Coleman. Nash tips up the miss, and then Bugs pulls down the rebound for the Gophers. Here's Bugs for three. Off the heel. Coleman, the junior college transfer from Iowa Western with the rebound. Missed it. Yeah, Nash was open yeah. there on the baseline. Yeah, that baseline is wide open. They have to look for those opportunities because they are there. Coleman for three. In and out. And right into the hands of Walker. And it's going to buy 12. Seven and a half to go here in the first. DeAndre Matthew hoists a three and nails it. We didn't shoot a lot of them. Only three of nine on the year, but a guy who shot plus 40 from the three-point line last year, so he can knock that shot down. That was a travel. <laughs> and Coleman got away with it. First points for Josiah Coleman. Started five of the first six games. They need North Dakota to get someone off the bench that can give them a lift because they've struggled on the offensive end, especially in the half court. Aston Tyler getting ready to check back in for UND. Here's Walker going right around the defense. Calcaterra hasn't looked comfortable in that matchup yet. Well, well it's hard, again, because you can't bomb. You can't give a little, even a broken arm. So that's really on your guards. Your guards have to come dig that out. He should not be able to take three dribbles and get to the basket. It's supposed to be a team defensive concept. The guards got to do a better job of digging that out. Nice pass there to Nash. But doing a good job defensively, Walker to come over and cut him off and make that a tougher shot. Continue to move the basketball around the horn and look back or look to the weak side. Another turnover forced by the Gophers. And then a foul on UMD. That's going to go against DeRuin. Minnesota really asserting itself here at Williams Arena. It's 36 21. Vision Baker said, uh uh, we're putting a Big Ten team in there. People here are very excited about the Golden Gopher football team. Great job being done by Jerry Kill and his staff, the Big Ten Coach of the Year this year. It's a beautiful stadium they have over there. Fantastic. I was really impressed. That was the first time I'd seen it when I was driving over there. Really, just, just beautifully done. 36-21, Minnesota on top of North Dakota. There's six minutes to go here in the opening half. Tell you after that ball screen, the guy who's rolling off of there for North Dakota is wide open. Sometimes you have to simplify that thing when you take when you're playing against a tough defense, and they're certainly playing against one tonight. Walker got a piece of that. Matthew gonna take it himself. High off the window and down. He's in double figures. I knew he was fast. But he's faster than I thought. <laughs> My goodness. He is a lightning bug. DeAndre Matthew, the senior out of Knoxville, Tennessee. He's got 11 points now for Minnesota. The size of Walker and the speed of the Gophers, really too much for North Dakota at this point. It, it certainly has been, and their ability to make you take challenge shots, and when you have a blur like this, one change of direction dribble, you can get an angle to the basket, and I'm not sure that there's anyone in the country that does it better than DeAndre Matthew. Last year, Minnesota won the NIT, barely missed the NCAA tournament as Tyler leans in and he's going to be called for the offensive foul. That's the first on Eston Tyler. Followed the Big Ten very closely. Maybe not as formidable as it was last year. What are the prospects for Minnesota to get to the big dance this time? Well, the, what we talked about is their defense was going to be rock solid. But could Hollins, can Walker step up to be all lead kind of players? And if you can get that consistent see from those two guys, then it puts them in great position. We're talking to Coach Richard Pertino today. Can you imagine? Last year, they had no all-league guys. I was surprised by that with the success yeah. that they had. I mean, no all-league guys. He certainly thinks that Andre Hollins and maybe DeAndre Matthew will be in that conversation this year. Walker can be. He's well, talented Walker enough be. to be. Let's 
17-point lead, biggest of the night for Minnesota. They nearly turned UND over again. And now a foul called on North Dakota. Well, Sunday on ESPNU, Travis Trice and Denzel Valentine lead the Spartans against the up-tempo running gun offense of the Golden Grizzlies. Oakland battles Michigan State, part of Holiday Hoops, presented by Kate Jewelers Sunday at 8 on ESPNU. On court of college hoops, the Spartans, one of three Big Ten teams to drop out of the top 25 this week. Michigan and Illinois. Uh, the others Michigan State desperately needs a third score to emerge Denzel Valentine and Travis Trice cannot carry the offensive load alone It's really Wisconsin and maybe Ohio State and then you're trying to figure out who's gonna be three four five Right up there to uh, contend in the upper half of the Big Ten. Yeah, and I'm not so sure about Ohio State, especially as I look at a team like Minnesota I think they can play with those guys the team that I really like is Illinois Nana Egwu is terrific on the inside a guy who's Primarily who steps out on the floor as a seven-footer to shoot it, but he's really improved his post game and they have terrific guard play Sweet stroke from Hollins, but didn't get it to go North Dakota in double figures in turnovers now they've got ten The see, floater doesn't go for hooker see everything's a tough contested shot right now for North Dakota That is not good here on the road Hollins driving He's looking for the foul, no whistle. I think Quentin Hooker, 21 in black, is injured right now. Something to keep an eye on. Well, it's all Minnesota right now as Hooker slowly walks to the North Dakota sideline. His team trying to regroup with three and a half. In some man-to-man -man scenarios, and they were able to get some easy looks then. Minnesota went to that 2-3 zone and started switching and trapping everything. And North Dakota, ever since they've gone to that 2-3 zone offensively, has been out of sync. Three and a half to go here in the first. 17-point lead for Minnesota. DeRuin. See, they're in a man now. This is the time to ball screen and allow those quick guards of North Dakota to get in the gaps and make plays. Nice. Wow, that was smooth by Terrell DeRuin. Transfer from New Mexico State now it's seven and notice against the man Minnesota went man that time the ball screen can allow the guards to get in the gap That was a beautiful read After what uh, New Jersey Institute of Technology did to Michigan over the weekend. I don't think Minnesota was going to take this North Dakota team lightly here tonight Yes Coaches at the mid-majors and the talent level too good to take anyone for granted. And Lenny Antwi, the best three-point threat for North Dakota, buries his first triple. And Richard Patino with a disgusted look on his face. Face a tough road test against Rondé Hollis Jefferson and the Wildcats. Journey to the tourney, part of Holiday Hoops, Saturday at 5.15 on ESPN, home court of college hoops. What did you make of that loss by the Wolverines? I've said before they're, they're a little down this year and Karis Levert is a terrific player He'll be better next uh -huh. year, but they don't really have the franchise kind of players this year that they've had in the past And quite frankly across the board with a couple of exceptions throughout the country a lot of teams are vulnerable right now There are terrific coaches in the mid-majors who have some older guys who can really play who play with chips on their shoulders And they certainly look to prove a point when they're playing against the high majors. Well, that's certainly a humbling loss Anything's going to start to square him away, something like that, sir. As Calcaterra is called for the personal, his second walker goes to the free throw line. Minnesota, not a very good free throw shooting team coming into the night. 60% on the year. That's certainly an area where they need to improve. Signs that that is actually starting to happen coming in recent games as they shot it well at the line against Wake Forest going 12 of 14. And Walker hits both here, but in the Big Ten, as physical as that league is, and as close as games can be down the stretch, yes. got to shoot it well at the line. Oh, without a doubt. And especially if you can get your bigs, Mo Walker particularly, shooting it well from the line because he's going to get fouled. And you don't want to have to take your big out of the game late in the game because of his inability to shoot free throws. Right. One of the most valuable things you can have in the big is a guy who can rebound the basketball and shoot free throws well because you don't have to play the sub game at the end of close games. Five on the shot clock. Tyler. Yeah, it looked like he pushed off there. Left it short. And here comes Minnesota. 14-point lead. 
Matthew. Nice. For Hollins for three. Bingo. DeAndre Matthew creates unbelievably wide open opportunities for this Minnesota team off the bounce. He is so good. And Walker playing great defense there. And that's Hooker. Going to stay down in this end. Look at the dribble penetration. Anytime you get a baseline drive, you want a weak side baseline drift. Andre Hollis doing a really nice job of relocating to the corner spot and drills the triple. Officially, they've got him with three assists. I think they may have shortchanged him one or two. He has been impressive tonight as you look at Hollins. And uh, his three-point ability, second in school history to Blake Hotfarm. Coming in this game, he's been terrific. 56% from the three-point line over the last three. Coming up the half, college basketball preview. Stats and highlights. And Fitzgerald and great Dino Gaudio. Yes. Have it for you. Love Dino. What a wonderful man. Thought he was a pretty good coach, too. I don't know what happened with that Wake Forest job. Right. My goodness. Successful before he left. Now he's starting to like TV too much. Yeah, I think so. We'll never get rid of <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Charles Bugs tried to dump it down for Kanate, who's into the game for the first time. Here's Mason for three. And a foul here on Minnesota. That's Bakari Kanate, the true freshman from Mali, who Rick. Richard Pitino thinks is going to be great someday. Well, I was watching him this morning warming up in the shoot around. He's got a beautiful stroke. He's bouncy, long arm, seems to have good timing. He's just raw right now. To get the season under his belt, he's going to be terrific next year. Correction, they gave it to Bugs, but uh, what you're saying about Kanate. He's the number three center right now for Minnesota, and he's probably going to have to play more of the four now based on the loss of Josh Martin, who announced today that he's going to transfer, and, and Daquan McNeil is suspended indefinitely because of his legal troubles. And what a luxury to have. A 6'11 guy as your power forward. Final seconds here of the first half. 17-point lead for Minnesota. They've been in charge from basically the opening tip. Nash hemmed in on the baseline, and he turns it over with the travel. Yeah, and, and that's on his teammates. When you see your teammate get stuck underneath the basket that way with two guys around him, someone has to get to the strong side corner. Four guys end of half scenario. And they like to do a little back screen action and a push and try to kick it for a three. So North Dakota's going to have to be careful not over-helping on this possession. Hollins gets it in. Nate Mason. He'll take the last shot. Left it short, and that's how the half comes to an end. Minnesota shoots almost 59% from the field. Walker with 17 first half points as Minnesota. Selection is certainly going to have to be better here in this first four minutes. And that's what it is on the road. Can you get stops here early, not turn the basketball over, and give yourself an opportunity for quality looks on the offensive end? If North Dakota can do that in this first four minutes, they may be able to get that thing back to 10. And once you can get that thing to 10, now all of a sudden, psychologically, it changes for you and gives a very young team with three guys from the area some confidence. Now, Cal Katera, Minnesota native, too, from Cloquet. He has been getting a workout from Mo Walker here tonight. Nice throwback. Here's King. Not about a shot. They work it around for Hollins, and then he travels. It's a good call. Initially, his left foot was his pivot foot, and as he got ready to go, he raised it up to go before the ball hit the floor. Nice call. North Dakota lost three four-year mm -hmm. starting guards. Troy Huff, Jamal Webb, Aaron Anderson. They combined for 4,600 career points. That's a lot to replace. So, like Minnesota is now, they're working on chemistry, too. Yeah, Troy Huff, a guy, average, uh, not average, but scored over 2,000 points in his career. And so, yes, with seven new places, they did it right. So, again, they're a good veteran official, officials crew. Doing a nice job out there. So, Matthew... In a strange turn of events, mm -hmm. commits a foul, but he's the one that ends up at the foul line. <laughs> yeah, because of the flagrant foul. And again, Minnesota's foul shooting this year up to now has been 
less than stellar. And, and surprising with as many guys that they have who shoot the three ball, usually there's a correlation between how well you shoot it from the perimeter and how well you shoot it from the free throw line. But at times they've been atrocious from the line. So Minnesota watches Matthew miss them both, but after the flagrant one, they retain possession, leading by 17. I'd like to see him go back to Mo Walker. I mean, he carried their offense from the low post, and now we're only a minute into it, but they haven't taken a look at him. There you go. Walker went up for the reverse, and it stripped. Dakota really needs to get Jerron Nash going. The senior from Waterloo, Iowa, averages 14 points per game. He was held to four in the first half. Tyler hits the baseline jumper. What worked for North Dakota in the first half was dribble penetration, forcing the over-aggressive help and the kick. They need to do more of that here in the second half if they hope to climb back. Hollins, a floater, too strong. Tied up jump ball. And the possession arrow will favor North Dakota. There's Chad Calcaterra, transfer from Colorado State, one of six Minnesotans on this UND roster tonight. He has two double-figure games on the year, but so far North Dakota has not looked to throw it to him inside, even when he's had Mo Walker right behind him. Sometimes you gotta turn down what you're looking for and get the easy one. A couple times he's had two feet in the lane, and I know Calcaterra can score from there. Look, he's open again. They're not even looking at him. So it puts no pressure on Mo Walker. He can basically just relax in the half court. The runner by DeRuin is off the mark. And Walker with another rebound. Hollins trying to create himself, and he draws the contact. The guards from Minnesota put so much pressure on you on the push that it is very difficult. You've got to make sure that you have five guys back in the painted area and build out because they're always looking to attack. And there goes Zestin Tyler. He's going to sit down with three personals. Dre Hollins from the corner. That's spun out. But Carlos Morris, nice rebound, and he misses. Should be on Mo Walker over the back. And it is. Dribble penetration and the kick for North Dakota. Important the next four minutes of this game. It's yeah. a first foul on Walker tonight. He's done a pretty good job to play physical around the basket, but avoid the foul trouble. Well, again, Clay, they're not, North Dakota's not throwing it inside to Calcaterra. And so, again, Mo Walker can basically relax on the defensive end and rest. When you got a guy that's cooking the way he has, you got to give you a big a chance to go at him on the offensive end to try to neutralize the impact on the game. Joey King picks up his first. Third team foul on Minnesota. Joey King, a transfer from Drake. Double figures in five of the first eight games for the Gophers, but so far... Without a point. Yeah, he can stick it from the three-point line. Eight of his last 14 from three. Really knocking it down on the season. See, look, Calcaterra is open right now. They don't even look to get it to him. Nash decides to drive, and he gets it to go. Dribble penetration, the kick, and the redrive important for North Dakota. North Dakota trying to chip away down 13 now. King around Nash and he got the right hand baby hook to fall. North Dakota has been successful when Minnesota has been in man. When Minnesota has gone to the two three zone, they have not been able to solve that riddle. Nash a little head fake and he goes into the double team and draws the contact. Maybe his ears were burning because we talked about Nash being basically no factor so far tonight. Several trips up the floor. He's picked it up Watch when Calcaterra 33 in black after this this ball screen is set 
inside. Watch him duck in. He is wide open down there. You have to give him a chance to go at Mo Walker to try to fatigue Mo Walker because, again, the course of this game, Mo Walker is basically able to rest on the defensive end and because of no pressure being put on him by North Dakota. they got to look to get him that basketball inside. That was the first trip to the line tonight for North Dakota. And Nash makes one of two. A lot of time. They're only down 14. But again, Minnesota, I'd like to see them go right back to Walker inside to get him going here in the second half. Nice try. Matthew finds a seam to the rack. Andre Matthew with his first bucket of the second half. He's so poised and patient when he gets in the gap that as soon as the help comes over and leaves, then he explodes into a shot. He's six of eight from the field here tonight. Three ball on the way, and it goes down for Lenny Antwi. That's his second triple. And his first year of the second half. Yeah, we talked about it all game. Dribble penetration and a kick against man. It's been really good for North Dakota. They find Walker. And Walker now. A new career high. He's got 19 points. DeRuin doesn't get the bounce. And King pulls it away. Got numbers here. Three on two. Matthew leading the attack and it's stripped. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Minnesota leading it, but North Dakota maybe with the out. With this raised floor here in Minneapolis. Good crowd here tonight, uh, considering it's a non-conference tilt and uh, a late start. Yeah, I was surprised with it being 8 o'clock at night. People have to get up and take their kids to school in the morning and get to work, but... That's what Richard Pertino was talking about. One of the reasons he took the job, he knew that this is a basketball hungry university and a group that really comes out and supports their team, which creates unbelievable atmosphere. And you'll be surprised the number of teams that you can beat on your home floor just because of atmosphere. Yeah, just the one season of head coaching experience at FIU before getting the job at Minnesota. When he got the job, did you think Minnesota was taking a risk? No, I certainly didn't think they were taking a risk. I thought he would bring a unique approach, especially defensively in the Big Ten, that would allow them to be successful because now you have to adjust to his style. Not a lot of people in the country can play the kind of 2-3 zone that they play and play pressure the entire game. What other team in the Big Ten does that? And as you can see there, they defend this home floor at the barn very well. 38 straight non-conference home wins. Duke, of course, has the longest non-conference home winning streak in the country. Now he's out of bounds. He'll stay on this end of the floor. And Richard Pitino, having learned from his dad, Rick Pitino, a Hall of Famer. I mean, he's had, so he's gone from there with Billy Donovan. So not only his dad, he's had some guys who achieved at a very high level pour into him as a coach i was just watching him this morning he has a wonderful demeanor yep. yeah, expectation from his kids but a wonderful demeanor kind of jokes around and when it's time to be serious uh he gets his kids serious so i think he has a really good balance coaches a player's coach uh, that's going to be a turnover for minnesota carried it Minnesota has done a pretty good job limiting the turnovers. That, that was one of the things you talked about at the top of the broadcast that's been a concern for the Gophers. Well, certainly 17 turnovers per game over the last four. Two of those games, they had 20 turnovers. And again, to get into the upper echelon of the Big Ten, big goal for this Minnesota Gophers team, they got to get those turnovers down around 12. And the last one was their seventh. Nice. Three ball. That goes down. Dustin Hobaugh, he's been quiet tonight. It's that three ball to go. Yeah, five of his seven made field goals now are three, so you know what he's coming to the game to do. Another transfer for North Dakota started his career at Houston Baptist. Past the six minute mark of the second half, 14 minutes to go. Smart kid studying aviation. And Walker will go to the line for a three-point opportunity. He continues to add to his career high. With a ball reversal, Mo Walker does a nice job of ducking in down low. And we've said at this half, 
they've been reluctant to get him the basketball early, but that's tough when that basketball swinging around and you have your big step in, and he does a nice job of getting big and giving a nice target to throw it to, and Paul Walker has been nothing less than sensational in this game. Last January, he scored 18 against Wisconsin. Tonight, 22 points for Mo Walker, who's going to take a breather on the Minnesota bench. And if he can give anywhere close to that kind of production on a consistent basis in Big Ten play, Minnesota's definitely going to get him in that upper echelon of the Big Ten. You said it before, Richard Pitino thinks if he asserts himself, he can be one of the best big men in the Big Ten, and if he does that, that's going to help Minnesota's chances to be in that upper tier of the Big Ten Cup. Well, he's playing so efficiently, and it has to do with all of that weight that he lost. Now, all of a sudden, you're not carrying around that extra weight. I, I, I would ask someone to take a 40-pound salt bag and tie it to yourself and walk around for the day and, and see how you feel. Right. That's what it's like when you're carrying around 40, 50, 60, 70 extra pounds. And so I would expect he should have a 40-inch vertical now having lost that all, that, right. all that weight. But he's moving so well and playing with a lot of confidence. Cashman at the line for North Dakota as Matthew picked up his third personal. He's going to take a seat. But it's not just that he lost the weight which certainly has helped, but he's toned himself. He spent a lot of time in the weight room, it looks like. Well, again, Richard Pitino, having been under his dad, when you play for Rick Pitino, he basically does what Pat Riley did back in the day. All the bigs have to be 10% body fat or below, and all the wing players and guards have to be under 9%. So if you're playing for either of the Pitinos, you know that you're going to be in shape. Nate Mason, a true freshman guard for Minnesota, whose playing time continues to increase. And there's a whistle and a foul away from the ball against the Gophers. And that's going to go against Kanate, his first. Well, Friday, ESPNU brings you coverage of the 2014 Men's College Cup with a win or go home doubleheader as four teams vie for a shot at the national title. Semifinal action kicks off at 5 and continues at 7, presented by Northwestern Mutual. Also on the Watch ESPN app. How are your soccer skills? Brutal, just like any other sport. <laughs> it's a good thing it's winter time. I don't have to play golf. And that's really bad. And another forced turnover here by Minnesota. That's an offensive foul on UMB. Yeah, Josiah Coleman using that inside hand to water off the defender. Nice call by the official. Fifteen turnovers now for North Dakota. Even with this lineup in from Minnesota, I still think they don't need to go away from the postal ice and can score down on that low box. And the whistle's coming hot and heavy now as DeRuin picks up another personal. Let's go back to this, uh, which we talked about at the top. Eleven steals per game. Actually, a little more than that. Six tonight. They've turned North Dakota over 15 times. They're averaging over 20 turnovers for us per game. Yeah, one of the best in the country at turning you over. They're so good at it. Constant pressure on the basketball, and they do a nice job of denying wings as well. And when they get into that 2-3 zone, it really messes up your offensive flow, and they get a lot of turnovers, turnovers out of that as well. Nice high-low action. Eliasson dumps it down for Kanate, and they're going to call Kanate with another foul. His second on this end of the floor. They've both been offensive fouls on him. Well, they felt he used his inside hand to ward off Quinton Hooker underneath to get that basketball and go up and jam it. Let's take a look and see if he pushed off. I didn't see it. Ooh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> Uh, he is a, a true freshman from Mali, still learning the game. They yeah. think he's got great potential, as you alluded to in the first half. He's still trying to figure this out, though. You can tell at times. Well, he's knocking down some threes in their shooting drill early. So this kid, along with that athleticism and length, he's got a bright future here for the Golden Gophers. Nice kid. Matthew, another beautiful dime, this time to Eliasson for the slam. That's his sixth assist. And now a foul on this end. Well, now the officials have to get in and separate. And we may have a technical foul here.
team plays with. He wants not only his guards to play that way, he wants his entire team to play that way. So I know he's pleased with Elias and doesn't like the technical foul necessarily, but the fact that he would come back and try to stand up for himself is a positive for Coach Patino. The technicals were for Taunton. No mm -hmm. shots mm -hmm. for those technicals, but because of the personal on Eliason, mm -hmm. Coleman's at the line. He got the first one more coming. Josiah Coleman started the first five of the first six games. His minutes have been down as of late. Hadn't shot the basketball very well. Four of his last 20 from the floor coming into this game. Good defense there by North Dakota running the baseline, and Richard Patino. And the Gophers forced to call a timeout. We step aside under 12. With ESPN's help, the V Foundation is going to lick cancer one day. Uh, I mean, so many people are impacted by it. My friend and mentor, Richard Beats, passed away a few years ago as a result of cancer. And so, you know, it used to be kind of one of those out there things. Now, I think every person, and particularly in our country, has been impacted by it. Six degrees of separation yep. in some way. Alongside LaFonso Ellis, former Notre Dame forward. We're going on to play in the NBA, drafted in the NBA by the Nuggets. Fifth overall that year. He got lucky. He also played here in Minnesota for a time. Enjoyed my time here. It's great. 2000 2001 season. Chance to play with KG and Wallace Serviak and Gibson. Really good players. Anthony Peeler, Dean Garrett. Yeah. Dean Garrett still calls Minnesota home. <laughs> Dino, great guy. You know it must be a strange world when you get an Indiana guy and a Notre Dame guy liking each other. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's for sure. That was the 17th North Dakota turnover. 16-point lead for Minnesota. Matthew runs it down and a great feed for Kanate. That's the seventh dime for DeAndre Matthew. His vision and awareness of where his teammates are, uncanny. Nice. Three ball. And that rattles off for Coleman. Coleman got the miss, throws it up, and he'll go to the line. Watch how... As that basketball comes around, and now he picks it up. Look, his eyes are always up. That's the sign of a really good distributor. That eyes are always up, which allows you to be able to see guys off in the corner of your periphery. And no one lays it on the hands any better than number four for the Minnesota Gophers. Matthew is he's tough. This is my first time actually getting a chance to see him play live, and he's better than I thought he was in watching him on film. And remember, last year was his first year in a Minnesota uniform. He's got a full year, a full season in the Big Ten under his belt. You can only think that he's going to be better this season. And the way he leads this offense, it could mean great things for the Gophers. The game has changed, both in the NBA and college. It used to be a pass game, now it's a dribble game. And when you have somebody who can handle the basketball the way he does with the vision he has, well, it puts Minnesota at a great advantage offensively. And the other point guard, Nate Mason, is going to get some time at the point this year. He's going to find himself at the free throw line. He's been the most impactful freshman for the Gophers this year. He hasn't really been phased by the big stage. Uh, anytime they've been playing, uh, Bigger team, St. John's, and he has a poise and a steadiness about him. So this Minnesota team is in good hands for a long time with that young man. That's the free throw, but almost a three-to-one assist to turnover ratio for a true freshman. That's something. Yeah. Calcaterra has it swatted away by Walker. And coming out of there with it is Carlos Morris. And Walker has completely dominated inside. Now King tries the reverse. And that came out of his hand. Minnesota gets it back. Now Matthew, a three-on-one. Drops it back for King. Got it and one. Well, that was entertaining us all. Get it.
DeAndre Matthew averaging six assists on the season, folks. Watch as he comes up with the basketball. Watch his eyes. Always looking and surveying the floor, trying to find guys, and drops it off to Joey King. And the bump, the finish, an opportunity for a three-point play here. DeAndre Matthew, woof, man, he is entertaining to watch. Three-point play for King. Eston Tyler now playing for North Dakota with three personal fouls. Clay, I had a guy I played with in college here in our same class named Elmer Bennett who had unbelievable vision and the ability to drop those little dimes off. DeAndre Matthews' ability to do that reminds me a lot of Elmer Bennett from Houston, Texas. Uh, drafted by the Atlanta Hawks in 1992 and played a million years overseas. He's got eight assists tonight. Came into the night averaging six. And I've noticed, even against pressure, he's never sped up. And a bit of that is just being a senior, having been through a lot of awards, but also the ability to have that thing on a string. Such great confidence. Look how patient he is when he gets in the gap. Trying to feed it to Walker there. It's knocked out of bounds. That's another reason I think that Nate Mason is going to be so good. He's going to have a year to learn under DeAndre Matthew, who's got it down. Going against each other every single day in practice only helps a young guy. Under 10 minutes to go here in Minneapolis. All Gophers. Walker, double team. Spits it back out on the perimeter. King thought about the three, the shot fake. Two to shoot, they better hurry. Morris throws it up and got it at the horn. And folks, that's not a lucky shot. Morris is an incredible shot maker. 21 point lead now, biggest of the night for Minnesota as Walker defended the hoop well there. Morris will try a three and he got it. He's got 10 now. Nice. Calcaterra, boy, he's been wanting to do that all night. Finally gets an opportunity, slams it down. New career high for assists now for Matthew. He's got nine. Okay, again, Calcaterra, I don't think he gets enough, enough touches in the scheme of the offense, especially when he has two feet in the painted area. Nash, and it's swatted away by Walker. Minnesota is, <laughs> it helps to have a guy like Carlos Morris, number 11 in white, who can create shots out of nowhere. And this is where they're so good, especially with number four on the push. Eyes are always up. They're not only good getting to the rim, but if you get back to the painted area, they have several guys who can stick it from three. They're so good in transition. That's going to be on Morris. And that's the third on Carlos Morris. But he has hit the ground running, too, for Minnesota since transferring in. Ten points tonight. Five rebounds. He had eight steals against Wake Forest last week. He can do a little bit of everything for Minnesota. And you expect, as the season goes on, and he gets more and more comfortable with this program, he's going to get better. Well, they needed someone to step in to the vacated spot left by Austin Hollins. And he's been exactly that. I mean, he's not a great shooter, but he's a good shot maker. He can beat you off the bounce. He can make all of these really weird angled shots. And you like to have a guy in your lineup who, when the offense gets stagnant, can go get a bucket. And he's that guy. Junior from Apalachicola, Florida. Mm. Here's Morris. Settle it back with Mason. Mason, high school valedictorian, Arlington Country Day in Jacksonville, Florida. Not only can play the game, but he's smart as a whip. And that three for him goes off the mark. Eston Tyler gets it ahead for DeRuin. Nice feed inside for Nash. Doesn't get the shot to go, but he'll be at the line when we come back. Under eight to play, Minnesota by 20.
he's got some younger people, including Bakari Kanat, coming off the bench. You can give them some good minutes, at least across the front line. And as I look at their front line, starting front line, sorry, their starting perimeter players and the guys that they have coming off the bench, I think they'll be in good shape. The real test will come when Big Ten play starts. Gophers will open up at Purdue on New Year's Eve. We saw Purdue on ESPNU earlier tonight getting a win. But yeah. Richard Patino now, he's also had one go around in Big Ten play after last year, and he should understand the landscape a little bit better, too. And a lot of those teams are a little bit. Wow. Good night. Dre Hollins with the flush. Those teams, at least defensively, a little bit more predictable. And to your point, Coach Patino has navigated those waters, has familiarity with those teams. He plays a unique style, both in man and in zone defensively, that's going to disrupt a lot of offenses. So they're going to have to respond to this Minnesota team when they're playing against them. So, again, I like their chances with what I've seen tonight to be able to climb into that top six of the league. Nice pass. And Eliasson puts it in now 70 to 47. Biggest lead of the night now for Minnesota. 23 points. Just over seven minutes to go. Nice. Calcaterra lays it in. He's got four now. That's his first basket of the second half. Gonna be a highlight show. Hollins off the steal. And Minnesota calling a timeout. The three, because remember that St. John's game as it was starting to get away. Coach Patino thought for a quick second to put him in at three, but because he hadn't played at that position at that point, he didn't want to put him in an uncomfortable situation. So they have the bigs across the front line, plenty of depth there. And because of Mason's ability to be a combo guard, they have depth across their perimeter as well. This is what you were talking about at the top of the broadcast. Minnesota, because of the suspension, because of the transfer, they're working through some things with their rotation, but as we're seeing tonight, it looks like Richard Pitino has a plan, and a plan that could work effectively. Yeah, because on the defensive end, the system is there. It's a system. And all of those guys, including Charles Bugs, 6'9", a guy who can play either the 3 or the, or the 4 spot. Again, they have depth on their bench. Those guys just haven't played a lot of minutes. With this upcoming schedule that they have, those guys will be able to get some live game minutes, get in the rotation, and gain some confidence, which will be much needed once they get into Big Ten play, because Purdue is right around the corner. And last foul on Matthew. He's playing with four. Matthew skips it over. Mason. Directing traffic. Again, very mature for a true freshman. He is hardly a wallflower. He, he <laughs> takes command out there. Yeah. You get a whistle and a foul. And Away from the ball here on North Dakota. It's going to go on Quentin Hooker, his second person. Yeah, Rick, Rick Patino, when I asked him about Richard Patino, forgive me, when I asked him about Nate Mason today, he just said, Fonz, he's just a gamer. Yeah. A guy who you can put out there and he just makes good decisions when he has the basketball and has an awareness and an understanding where he needs to be on the floor offensively and defensively. Kudos to that freshman. His high school valedictorian. A very heady young man. I like the balance offensively of this Minnesota team, too, because remember, Joey King has been quiet tonight, and he's a guy that averages about 10 points per game. And as a stretch four, he can put it in the basket, and that's going to be a tough matchup for many teams in the Big Ten. Shia Coleman had that one roll off the rim. Here comes Morris. Slip through Matthews' hands. Mason will take the deep three. Nate Mason on uh, that assist from Matthew. Now Matthew has the double-double. Points and assists. First time since the 2010 season that the Gophers have had a guy in double figures in points and assists. Wow. 
I mean, the ability to survey the floor and find guys and be able to make the pass. He's such a threat to beat you off the bounce. A lot of even guards are afraid to get up into his airspace. And so many of the times you can see when he's making that pass, there's no pressure on him. And if you don't take away his vision, he will find guys. And he's excelled in that area of the game tonight. And Clay, this North Dakota team is not going to see this kind of pressure and these kind of athletes' quickness and speed in the Big Sky Conference. And so I do think the seven new faces that they brought in to, to fill the void of all that offensive production that was lost by the three that graduated last year, I think they're going to be fine. And they're going to be tested here early and take a lot of that confidence and experience back into conference play. King knocks down the three. Now you're right about North Dakota. They were the tournament runners up last year. They're expected to be competitive again this year. Mm -hmm. And Weber State is the favorite in that league. Eastern Washington pick number two. As Morris goes right to the tent. Carlos Morris having a nice second half. As he's got a dozen now. Don't fall asleep on Eastern Washington. Already have gone down to IU Bloomington and beaten them on their home floor. They have a center named Banky Joyce, about 6'8", six, 6'9", six, and he can score it from the outside, but he's really good in the low post. He is a handful. And this is part of a brutal stretch for UND before Big Sky play starts in January. The sixth game in seven away from home, and they still have trips to North Dakota State, yeah. one of their old rivals, and they've got to go to Marquette yet before they open up Big Sky play. <laughs> Wojo's doing a nice job up there as well. Um, but again, what's the purpose of all this? The purpose of all this is to get, you want to win games, of course, but on nights like this, the experience against the size, the speed, the intensity and athleticism will be a bonus for North Dakota when they go into Big Sky play. <laughs> Very impressive. Morris and Mason running the floor. Mason with the finish. But Clay, can you see the versatility? I know we're concerned about the two, the two that Minnesota's lost, but can you see the versatility that Richard Pertino has at his disposal across the front line and the perimeter? Minnesota running away with it here. The basketball well since. Let's revisit the numbers from the top of the broadcast. Uh, we talk about turnovers forced and steals and Minnesota right on point tonight. And you can almost look at those stats and not even have to look at the game score because when they're doing that, that is the identity of this Minnesota Golden Gopher team. And when they're doing that, the wins will take care of itself, of themselves rather. And offensively, also getting it done, 59% from the field they have shot. And they've got five players in double figures. Off the steal. And Terrell DeRuin, who's getting close now to his game average, lays it in off the steal. So this North Dakota team has some really good guards. The question coming into the season, could they get any production from their center position? And that's really going to be the key to their success once they get into big sky play. Can they get consistent point production and rebounding from their bigs? And Mason is fouled. Minnesota should be able to put some wins together before they start Big Ten play on New Year's Eve. They've got Southern Seattle, Furman, UNC Wilmington before taking on the Boilermakers on the road. Well, and this is an opportunity for this team to establish their identity. I mean, they're playing for an NCAA tournament bid this year, and you look at those next four games, they're winnable games, and you not only want to win those games on your home floor, you want to really beat those teams to give your team some confidence, uh, continue to mold those guys who we spoke of earlier that weren't getting a lot of minutes because you're going to need that depth when you get into Big Ten play. And what a way to do it than on your home floor over the next four games. And a lane violation. Three minutes to go. Minnesota is going to go to seven and two on the year. With a 5 0 at home. And for North Dakota, before they start 
play in the Big Sky. They're going to take on North Dakota State in Fargo. NDSU out of the Summit League. Very good team. Yeah, they got a heck of a schedule ahead of them, but yeah. they have some help coming. Carson Shanks, a seven-footer, will be eligible at the end of this semester. And so, again, the only question I have about this team is at their center position. He'll go a long way in helping solidify that front line. Now, their other big man, Brian Cashman, excuse me, Bryce Cashman. I knew I was going to make that mistake, but I'm not the uh, baseball GM. But Bryce Cashman goes to the line. True freshman, raw. He's had to kind of be trial by fire because of the lack of experience at that center position. And you know, it's, a good, it's actually a good way to learn because for him, if he can get some confidence early, now all of a sudden as Carson Shanks comes into the fold, it gives you some depth at that center position. Western Missouri. When you think about where Brian Jones has taken this program, this was a Division II yes. program not many years ago, less than a decade ago. They played in the Great West Conference, made the transition to Division I, and now in a very competitive Big Sky Conference. And last year finished runner-up in both the regular season and in the tournament. He has done a terrific job. He really has. I mean, you, you talk about, to your point, a program that was nowhere Four straight CIT appearances. Yep. Pretty impressive. And to be on the doorstep of potentially getting into the big dance. So he's done a terrific job. And actually, I think he's reloaded versus rebuilding. Just going to take these, those seven new guys a little time to gain a little chemistry or create a little chemistry amongst themselves. The hardest part of his job, and we talked about this with Brian this morning, is the recruiting and educating the recruits on North Dakota, that it is now a Division I program, where it's located, that it's not located in Canada, as some people yeah. might want to believe. Uh, and, and he has done such a great job. About the facilities that they have in North Dakota, second to none. Terrific. Two on one. Mason, another assist. He's got eight. Carlos Morris continues to rack up the points. And he's got 14. That's what I would expect from a Brian Jones coach team. I mean, down big. 32 points, and they continue to battle. So a lot of grit and toughness here down the stretch. Cashman at the line again. North Dakota lost to Northern Iowa and Utah as part of their pre-Big Sky schedule. Both of those teams in the top 25 today. Mm -hmm. So the schedule for UND has been very difficult. And it goes back to what you were saying. It's all... It's going to help in the long run. Yeah. Look at how aggressively they're getting after the bed. They don't quit now. Really a testament to their char character, continuing to battle being as far down as they are. Beautiful He's shot for Mason, and now six players in double figures for the Golden Gophers. He's got 11. That freshman is really good. And he's only going to get better. Stripped. Comes Minnesota. Shell getting some playing time. We'll pull it back out. So we come up on a minute to go. Pretty much from the start, Minnesota in control in this basketball game. Going in for the hammer dunk, Coleman, and he lost it. Now Minnesota on the run. King will slam it down on the other end. Used to seeing Joey King knock down the three ball, not pushing that thing coast to coast in transition. Six players in double figures for Minnesota. They shot 
60% from the field tonight. 25 assists on the 36 field goals for the Golden Gophers tonight. The high man, Maurice Walker, 22 points. From start to finish, a very impressive effort here tonight for Minnesota. Well, I knew they were good defensively. I wanted to see offensively who could kind of step up and be that next guy. Mo Walker was certainly that. Credit this Minnesota team for getting it to him inside, and he really went to work, went to work and established them down in the low post. Matthew, the double-double, 15 points, 10 assists. Richard Patino has to be pleased. 92-56 the final.